Hello, Luna Owls. This is Mrs. Energy, your fifth grade science teacher. Um, and today this PowerPoint, uh, PowerPoint is about adaptations. Remember this week we are learning more about adaptations. So our objective for this um, week is 5.10a, compare the structures and functions of different species that help them live and survive in a specific environment such as hooves, on prairie animals or web feet and aquatic animals. All right, so we have some vocabulary. We have, a, you know, a lot of vocabulary, but that's perfectly okay. Some of this vocabulary we already know. So it's just like a review of the vocabulary. So we start off with species, a group of organisms with similar characteristics that allow them to reproduce, reproduction, making something new, adaptation any characteristic that helps a plant or animal survive in a specific environment niche the role of an organism plays in its environment and remember um, we learned this vocabulary when we were talking about food webs and when we were talking about the otter's role in its food web camouflage characteristics that blend in with the surrounding environment and increase chances of survival Mimi cry, the resemblance of an organism or its surroundings that give it a better chance of survival. Migration, the seasonal movement of animals from one place to another. Hibernation, when an animal, <clears throat> excuse me, becomes still in an enclosed space and reduces bodily functions to save energy. Habitat, the place or environment in which an organism naturally lives. Prey, an animal that is hunted for food and predator, an organism that hunts and feeds on other organisms, okay? All right, so before we begin, let's look at our content video that I always love for you guys to start off with. So let's look at our content video real quick. Welcome to the great outdoors. We're so happy you could join us on our walk today. Just before you arrived, we noticed something very cool. We saw a great blue heron down by the water looking for fish. I figured that its long skinny legs were good for wading at the shoreline and its long neck and beak would make it easier to dart underwater and grab the fish and frogs it was hunting. The shape of the heron's body helps it to overcome the challenge of getting enough food. But not all birds have that same body shape, even the ones that live in the same environment. Look at the wood ducks over there. The ducks definitely have shorter legs and necks than the heron did. Does that mean they're adapted to get their food in a different way? Yep, these ducks will mostly eat plants. Their bills are just right for scooping them out of the water. Take a look at their feet too. Why do you think they're so different from the herons? Hmm, the ducks were using their feet to swim, but the heron was just walking. Does the webbing that connects the duck's foot bones help them swim better? Exactly. Many water birds have web feet that catch water to help them swim, like a paddle for a canoe. Or scuba fins. I've used those before, and they made it so much easier to move through the water. Did you know that even polar bears have web feet that help them hunt in the ocean? I guess it's like shoes. We have special shoes for different purposes, like those swim fins, or sports shoes for playing soccer, football, or baseball. Okay, but animals don't exactly wear cleats, you know. <laughs> I know, but think about how a sports shoe is shaped. The hard pointed parts on the bottom of the shoe dig into the ground and help an athlete run faster and maneuver better by giving them traction. Before the city was built here, bison lived on the prairie and developed hooves like special shoes to help them run faster and escape predators. So animals with hard, sharp hooves can change direction and accelerate quickly, like a soccer player on the field. Hooves are a very useful adaptation. Webbed feet for swimming, hooves for running, claws could help with running too then, or for climbing, like the squirrels I keep seeing. Those would all help with getting food and with escaping from becoming a predator's prey, or with catching prey in the case of that cheetah. But what about surviving a harsh climate? I don't think hooves or webbed feet would help an organism survive extreme weather conditions. It can get pretty hot around here, and you'll find that the organisms that survive will have some protection from the heat. Some animals, like the armadillo, are nocturnal during the hot summer. Nocturnal means that they sleep during the day and are awake at night. 
They hunt at night when it's cooler and don't come out during daylight much until the winter when temperatures have fallen. And many reptiles like the Texas diamondback water snake or the alligators you can sometimes see here beat the heat with thick scaly skin. It traps moisture in their bodies and keeps it from evaporating too quickly. What about cold weather? Many species, like the wood ducks we were looking at earlier, depend on migration to survive a cold winter. During the colder months of the year, they fly south to climates where it's easier to find food. They'll head back north in the spring when weather warms up again. Some animals that don't migrate may hibernate, like bears, squirrels, and even bullfrogs, like you might see here in the bayou. They spend the colder months of the year in a sleep-like state where their bodies use less energy and become active again when weather is warmer and food more plentiful. Thanks for coming on the walk with me today. Anytime. Now it's time for me to head back to the lab. While I do that, your table groups can pick a habitat and four animals or plants that live in it. What adaptations does each of these living things have to help them survive? How are their adaptations alike? How are they different? All right, so remember we did do this um, think time, but if you wanna do it um, for yourself, you can go ahead. Remember, you can always pause this video um, so you can take the time and do this. I'm not gonna do this right now because I'm gonna give you more examples in PowerPoint. Habitats are very different all over the world, from the ocean to the desert and everything in between. Specific plant and animal species live in each environment because they have special structures and behaviors that enable them to survive and thrive there. A walking stick uses a kind of camouflage called mimicry, copying the appearance of the plants where it lives to blend in and escape predators as well as sneak up on prey. It is well adapted to survive in its environment, but would it be able to survive somewhere completely different? The walking stick's habitat is normally a woodland or forest, so it probably wouldn't do too well in a very different environment without the trees it looks like. We can often tell where animals are most likely to live by matching up their adaptations with the challenges in each environment. The cactus stores water in its stem. The gila monster has tough skin to hold in moisture. And finally, the kangaroo rat is nocturnal. By doing most of its activity at night, it can avoid the daytime temperatures. The bison fits well on the prairie, where there is plenty of grass and open space to run with its specially adapted hooves. It might not do well in the forest, where it would be too large and not have enough space to escape from predators. The bison might do well in the Arctic, except that species living in the very cold places would need a special way to keep warm. And as we learned today on our expedition, the heron, the wood duck, and the alligator all survive best near the bayou because of their adaptations that help them beat the heat and use the water to find food. All this talk about adaptations makes me wonder what my adaptations are as a human. Which habitat are we best suited for? And how do people survive in places with extreme environments? And what about Perry? I bet you could come up with his best habitat by looking at his structures. Okay, I'm gonna stop it right here. I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint. All right, <clears throat> so here are some questions to consider. Why are adaptations important? What type of adaptation is best for an animal that uses its feet to catch prey? What type of adaptation is best for an animal that swims on the water? What are the consequences that would occur if animals do not have adaptations? And what, ad what adaptations do humans have for survival? All right, so what is adaptation? So adaptation helps a plant or animal uh, survive. There are actually six kinds of adaptations and we're gonna learn those in this PowerPoint. So the first one is plants, adaptations, feed adaptations, limb, which is like um, legs, uh, adaptations, mouth adaptations, defense adaptations, and temperature adaptations. All right, so the first one we're gonna talk about is the plant adaptations. So in the Arctic regions, there's plenty of sunlight, and these are just examples of what uh, plant adaptations are. So in the Arctic regions, there's plenty of sunlight, but the winds blows unmercifully, which means that the winds blow very, very hard. Thus, the trees grow very low to the ground to avoid the wind. So because these winds blow 
very, very strongly, the trees in that region, they grow to be very low to avoid the wind. All right, so desert plants have roots that spread wide and extend deep into the ground to capture every valuable drop of water. And the reason why their roots are like really wide and they sink deep is because the desert doesn't usually always have water. So they want to make sure that they're going to be able to survive. So in order for them to survive, they want to make sure that their roots are longer than any other plant that is out there. Cacti can store gallons of water in their trunks to be used during periods of no rain. Again, cacti, they're in the desert, it doesn't rain a lot in the desert, so it wants to make sure that it's going to be able to survive. So its adaptation is that it has um, a storage that can hold a lot of water until the next rain comes. Every part of a plant, its root, stem, or trunk, leaf, flower, or fruit is vital to the survival of the plant and has been adapted to, to response to the effects of the environment. We also have examples on this side too, uh, such as rainforest, grow, rainforest trees grow very tall to compete for sunlight. So we've learned um, the life cycle for uh, a plant and we know that in order for a plant to lead, uh, live in these three things and need sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide. So these plants have to, these trees have to compete in the rainforest for sunlight in order to survive. And then the desert cactus, they have thick waxy skin to prevent water loss. All right, so we're going into feed adaptation. So animals that live in an Arctic environment have webbed feet to aid swimming in both cold and warm water. So these animals are like ducks, geese, polar bears, and otters. otters. So when you think about these animals, think about their feet, look at their feet. And as you see in this picture with this penguin and this duck, they have webbed feet. Um, for them to be able to survive in their environment. And remember, aquatic environment just means that there is just a lot of water, okay? It's usually like the ocean or um, Antarctica where some of the polar bears live and there's water there. All right, so the flaps of skin between the toes of webbed feet allow the animal to push against the water faster to catch food or escape from, uh, escape from predators. So these web feet are very beneficial. Because think, for example, when we're in the water and we're trying to swim, do you think we swim faster with or without the, um, the foot fins that you get um, when you go scuba diving? So the reason why they give you those, uh, those shoes, those web shoes, when you scuba dive is so that you can be able to swim faster. So sharp claws are an adaptation of many animals that need running, <clears throat> speed, climbing ability, or hunting skills. So when we 